back everyone. Today we've got uh, something a little bit different. This is going to be kind of an unboxing and like a, a mini review. Um, I've got these Monoprice Slim Run Cat 6A Ethernet patch cables. And there's a couple of different things I want to look at with these. Um, the first one is I've never actually purchased any of these Slim Run cables before. So I just want to get a look at how small they really are compared to, say, a normal cable, which I've got one of somewhere here. In fact, we'll use, well, are these shielded? No, there's 6A rated, but it doesn't say that they're shielded twisted pairs, so I'll grab some unshielded twisted pair to uh, put them side by side. In fact, I can pretty clearly see on these cables where the pairs actually are. So here's one we've separated out. Um, good job, Mono Price, for bundling each cable individually with its own twist tie in addition to the bundle. These are, I believe they're rated at 3.6 millimeters. And here, for comparison, is also Mono Price branded. Some Cat, what is this, 5E? Yep, so this is Cat 5E UTP right next to the Cat 6A UTP patch cable. So, I'd say you could probably fit three or four of these slim run cables in the same space you'd fit one of these normal UTP cables. Um, they, they're actually more flexible as far as their minimum bend radius. That's just kind of their natural curve there. Um, decent increase in flex. So there's a couple of different things I want to check on one of these first. And I'm actually going to leave it in what's probably the worst configuration for at least this test, which is bound and twisted up like this, is I want to see that if I get uh, 10 gig through it. So a couple of videos back, we did our coverage on this OWC 10 G base T Thunderbolt adapter. And just for clarification. This is a category 6A um, shielded twisted pair patch cable. So these cables are both theoretically category 6A and they're both rated the same. Uh, Mono Price has got much tighter twists on these and you can see that they bring the jacket of the cable almost all the way up to this snagless connector. Um, this isn't shielded, so if you're in a bad RF environment, even if they work well for this, I'm still going to lean towards a shielded cable, but I want to see if I get 10 gig through this thin cable like I should. So we're going to just plug it right in, plug it in here. I'm going to leave it all looped up like that, which is really as bad as you could get for unshielded twisted pair. It's going to fight with its own... EMI if there is any EMI spill and find my Thunderbolt port all right and uh, let's go ahead and just kill everything here except for OBS and I'm going to fire up well actually I already had it open start recording Open up PowerShell. And just as a reminder, we're running this against my dual Xeon server at the bottom of my rack out in the rest of my desk, um, which is connected to my network with an aggregate 20 gigs of bandwidth. 1.100 and 2.5 gig. You know what? I think I have this adapter configured for 2.5 gig right now because that was the last thing I tested on it. Yep, link speed is configured for 2.5, so I'm going to set it back to auto negotiate. All right. 
let's see what speed we auto negotiated at. Five. Interesting. And I'm getting five gigabits a second through it, but it didn't auto negotiate at five at ten. So let's go ahead and force my link speed to ten gig and see if this is just a fluke. So if that was going to negotiate at 10, it would have done so already. And I can double check that with a sanity check and throw the shielded twisted pair 6A in here. That I used before. And there it goes identifying at 10. So I've got a couple of things here. Number one, I left this cable bundled up, which does generate additional RF. So let's unbundle it. I'm just going to loop it around so that it's not passing any power directly. And now I'm going to plug it in. Well, I hate to say it, but these are, are very attractive sized cables. But it looks like if you're going to try and pass 10 gig through one, um, you might be better off with something else. And just to put that in perspective, they're not terribly priced. This was, where did my packaging for them go? This was a 10 pack of them and they ran, I think these were 10 foot cables. Ten piece. Yeah, these are 10 foot cables. I got a 10 pack of them, which is 1557. Um, not a terrible price. And it looks like they perform just fine up to five gig. Uh, but you're not going to get 10 gig out of them. I'll go into my network adapter properties here and change it back to auto negotiate. And I fully anticipate seeing a 5 gig link again. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll pick up a 10 gig link when it can negotiate at a lower speed and then work its way up instead of having to start there. But yep, there we go. We're identifying. Yeah, and it, it reestablished a, a five gigabit link. Uh, so, people using the TrendNet adapter that we looked at a while ago, or any of the 2.5G base T adapters, this cable is going to be perfectly fine. And, you know, 15 bucks for a 10-pack, this isn't a bad cable, but it is UTP, which means that it's sensitive to RF, a lot more so than a cable like this, which is shielded twisted pair. Now, Monoprice does have slim run shielded twisted pair and I'd love to get my hands on some of that to test um, as well because uh, we <laughs> I actually purchased this for work to use in a 10 gig uh, environment and it looks like it's not going to work 
Um, so this may be going back to Amazon. But uh, I've got one other thing I want to test with it. And so we'll, we'll kill OBS. And unplug the Thunderbolt adapter. And actually, I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi back on on my laptop because I will need it for this next section. Alright, so there's that. And I'll be back in just a moment. I have to go change what port this cable's plugged into. Alright, so while I was out of the studio, what I did was I moved the cable from the IPOLEX transceiver to one of the po other ports on my CRS328 top of rack switch. And the reason I did that is one thing that I've seen conflicting reports on with these slim run cables is their compatibility with power over ethernet. So I have an Amcrest 4K camera here. And theoretically, you know, it's plugged into a PoE port and it should work. So if I go ahead and turn on the Amcrest there, I should see it and I don't. I've heard some people say that these slim run cables work fine with PoE. I've seen other people say that they don't work at all. Um, and I see an LED on inside here. So I should be able to see my Amcrest camera and I think it's running DHCP so it may have changed since last time I was bringing it in to OBS. So I'm just going to do a quick check here. Okay, so yeah, it it is in fact working. Um, I'm gonna pull some of the footage out of the camera here in OBS and, and flip it around. So as far as the slim run cables are concerned, at least for PoE, um, this is, let's see, 12 volt, half an amp, so about six watts. In fact, I can check what the switch says it's using in a second here, but it's working fine. Um, side note here, I actually use an IP camera on my desk for my webcam in place of a traditional webcam. And there's, there's a variety of reasons for that and some of which are just related to, but, or sorry, not being able to get a webcam at the start of the current health crisis. So that was, was my solution, was I, I put something together myself. And I just want to check. What it says the power being used on the interface is. If I had actually paid attention on which one I had plugged it into. Oh, there we go. Okay, it looks like I plugged it into Ethernet 9. It says 2.4 watts, and just to check that I grabbed the right one, I'm just gonna stick my head out there and check which interface I plugged it into. Survey says 12. So if I look, all right, 4.2 watts, okay. Um, so yeah, 4.2 watts. The cable doesn't feel warm at all, which is a concern when you're pushing, you know, 50 volts through a cable this size. Um, I'm not sure how big of a PoE device you could run on it. This is really pretty typical for, well, let, let me grab, let me grab something else. All right, so this is probably the biggest PoE device that I can grab offhand. 
Um, this is a, a Grand Stream. It's actually an Android powered phone. So, PoE camera was fine. This is a Grand Stream. Uh, what model is this? GV GXV3240. Rated for an amp and a half at 12 volts. Which it will actually, let's see if I can grab something that will provide a small load. Looks like it uses about 4 watts during its power up phase here. Um, it even has a USB port that will provide power to something. If, oh, let's plug in one of my flash drives. Something really, really power hungry like this external SSD from Mushkin. once the phone's done booting up. Uh, because it, even though I didn't get 10 gig out of this cable, in, in hindsight, I'm not gonna return it. I got five gig out of it, so it's a good cable. Um, not quite what I wanted for a 6A rated cable, but not bad. And uh, something like this, you know, phones on desks and whatnot, would be a fantastic place to use it. All right, so the phone's pulled an IP address. And let's plug this in. I think part of that power rating is at least on AC power. Yep, 8.6 .6 watts. All right, so yeah, eight watts. Just let this run for a minute, see if it heats up, especially around any of these loops that would be potential places for an inductive current to cause problems. Uh, let's make it do a little bit of work. Let's open up, not the browser, we'll open the grand stream market, make it install YouTube. And then while it's doing that, Go to the file manager, go to the USB disk. And apparently I have a bunch of music on there. All right, so YouTube's installed. There was a problem starting up. You know, I don't have the Play Store installed. I wonder if I need that installed. Well, that's, that, that's besides the point. I, I've seen the power use peak at 7.7. .7. I was hoping to cause it to go a little higher, seeing if I could play a YouTube video. Maybe I can just do it in the browser. I'm effectively browsing the internet on an Android 4 phone. It's a little bit clunky. This, this is really not what these things were made for. Look at it struggle. All right, so I made it pull eight watts while it was trying to decode the video and doing its best job. So still, that's about as big as a load as I have. That's most typical PoE devices are below 10 watts anyway. Um, there's a couple of exceptions, especially on things like much newer uh, access points. Some of the Wi-Fi 6 models that, you know, have 2.5 and 10 gig ports on them can pull a little bit more power. I've also seen Ubiquiti launch power over Ethernet LED lighting. Um, but for your typical office application, a desk phone like this is even above and beyond what things would normally be. Um, 
because they, they're not Android powered desk phones or anything like that. So let's unplug that. This got warm. Cable is nice and cool. All right, I, I guess that brings us to short form, yeah, short form summary time. Basically, uh, I didn't get 10 gig out of it, which is really what I had hoped to get out of the cable. Um, I'll try it direct on my desk with this cable as the only piece in the line. That said, I don't think there's anything suspect with my home built Cat 6A cable when the shielded twisted pair patch cable works fine. Um, if you are working at 2.5 or 5G base T, this cable performs fine. If you're working with regular gigabit, it's overkill, but being nice and slim is a, a nice touch. And I will probably replace a couple of the cables around my desk. I know I meant, made a comment about returning it. I don't think I'm going to return it. I think that I will uh, use this a couple of different places where I'm just tired of some of the cables being in the way. So it's a nice touch for that. Um, bonus points for mono price, including twist ties on each individual cable. That's going to make cable management easier. I know they're not everyone's favorite. Um, I personally use a roll of Velcro for management. Um, so all of that said, I want to do two things. Number one, good job on cable creations for this. Uh, one foot patch cable. I, I actually got these to use these in my rack for a couple of short jumps that I needed and uh, These run fine at 10 gig Mono price I like it. I don't love it. The fact that I don't get 10 gig out of it is a problem um, So since 6a should be able to do 10 gig over the 15 feet that I've got here between here and my desk. Um, I guess that's all I have. Um, if you have any questions, you know, why would I pick a slim cable when I was hoping to get 10 gig? Well, they were the first ones that caught my eye and I thought it would be nice to not run big cables through the desk, or sorry, through the rack. Um, apparently that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, if you have any other questions besides the one that I just answered there, let us know in the comments below and we will answer it to the best of our ability. Um, if you want to help support Pocketables and encourage content like this in the future, uh, there'll be a link to our Patreon below. There'll also be a link to both this cable, which if you're doing 5G base T is perfectly fine. And if you're doing even gigabit, uh, slim cables are apparently perfectly fine and nice, um, as well as this patch cable that we've been using for testing 10 gig adapters in the description below. I want to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing music. And you actually heard a little bit of his music there when I tried to play one of our earlier videos on the phone's web browser, which how cool is that? A desk phone that runs Android. Um, that's even a dated model. There's a couple of newer ones available at this point. All that said, thank you for watching.